G'day, g'day, and welcome to Comics Mate, your mates in comics from the land down under. I'm Dean James, and today I'm going to be dissecting the disaster that is Disney in 2024. Disney, for all intents and purposes, is now a political propaganda production company and no longer the family-friendly entertainment studio we once knew and loved. They insist on pushing woke messaging into everything they produce to the detriment of their final product's quality. They focus on DEI for that ESG payout and forget what made them so successful in the first place. It now seems like pushing the message is not going well for them at all. They're losing more money and influence every single day, but they are yet to learn their lesson as you will see here in this video. But before we get into that, if you haven't already, please like to help push this video out into the algorithm and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Alright, now that that's out of the way, let's jump into this mess. From bounding into comics, Disney Plus continues to implode, announces loss of 1.3 million subs following price hike. Thanks to a number of factors, including its recent price hike, their Disney Plus service has bled a total of 1.3 million subscribers in the three month period between their two most recent earnings reports. Disney Plus has not yet reached a point where it's profitable, and judging by these latest numbers, it isn't going to be getting there anytime soon. Strap yourselves in, this is going to be a long and convoluted one. The significant dip in Disney Plus's subscriber count was first made public on January 7th, courtesy of the company's chief financial officer, Hugh Johnston. Detailing the current status of their streaming operations at attendees of Disney's Q1 2024 earnings call, Johnston informed them that though the company's Hulu platform had gained roughly 1.2 million subscribers in the time since the company's Q4 2023 earnings call in November, Disney Plus core subscribers decreased sequentially by 1.3 million. In total, that's 100,000 less users than they had in the previous year. Despite Hulu being successful, Disney Plus is dragging them down. So not a great start so far. According to Johnston, this drop in Disney Plus subscribers was driven by the expected temporary uptick in churn, given the recent domestic price increases, as well as the end of the global summer promotion, which offered new and returning users a three-month subscription for just $1.99. Further, the CFO claimed that these impacts were partially offset by strong ad-tier net ads due to domestic growth, as well as the launching in certain international markets in the first quarter. And here's where the cope starts. We're going to be okay, I swear. Your money is in safe hands, Mr. Shareholder. This is all part of the plan. Ha! Okay, mate. Though the individual platform was reportedly having a rough time, Johnston noted that for their overall direct-to-consumer streaming operations had seen its operating income improved by about $850 million versus the prior year and by nearly $300 million versus quarter four. Notice he is only mentioning the money here. He neglects to mention that the money is now coming from a far smaller user base than it once was. In other words, Disney's reach and influence is dwindling, but it's okay because we are just going to charge our remaining consumers more than they used to pay, making up the difference, and that's exactly what they did. To this end, the CFO also highlighted now thanks to the service's aforementioned price increase in October 2023, Disney raised the price of Disney Plus's ad-free tier by 27%, from $10.99 to $13.99. It had seen its average revenue per user increase by $0.14 cents versus the prior quarter and by $1.07 versus the prior year. See? What did I just say? As long as they can keep getting away with charging you more, they can minimize their losses as much as possible. It doesn't matter if they've lost more than half their subscriber base, they can just charge you more because you're not a customer in their eyes, you're not even a consumer, you're just pay pigs. Despite this massive drop in subs, Johnston ultimately asserted that in terms of the future, the company was expecting net ads of between 5.5 million and 6 million in the second quarter with a hopeful prediction of 7.5 million domestic subscribers looking to balance out a predicted decrease in international users. Now is probably a good time to mention that Disney Plus has never once in its entire time existing met any of their quarterly goals. And as you just heard, they plan on balancing out the money they've lost with 7.5 million new subscribers in the coming year. Assuming they actually reach that goal, which they won't, the only way that would be possible is if they were to charge even more than what they already are, so I'm predicting another price hike in Disney Plus's future. As noted above, this is but the latest subscriber-based woe for Disney's flagship streaming service. Most notably, in their Q3 2023 report, the company revealed that thanks to a break in their licensing deal with India-based streaming giant Hotstar, that quarter had seen Disney Plus lose a staggering total of 11.7 million subscribers. 
more than double the four million lost in the year's first quarter, and more than triple the two point four million lost in the final quarter of twenty twenty two. That certainly is a massive blow to Disney, but it would only affect customers in India. It doesn't explain why every other country around the world is losing faith in the once family-friendly company. Maybe the radicalization of Disney movies in an attempt to take a stand against the imaginary alt-right of America is what did it. But Dean, Disney is still a family-friendly company who just wants to entertain children with fun and entertaining movies. That's not actually true anymore, straw man I just made up. As can be seen here in this video from January 2021, Disney CEO Bob Iger said that American politics radicalized him and in turn the company as a whole. We've tended to uh, shy away from politics uh, and in doing so I think we've shied away from talking about issues that aren't political at all like the issues that we're talking about today um, because we believe in doing so maybe it, looked like, it looks like we're taking a stand. Well in that reality we should be taking a stand. I take by the way I, t I take responsibility for this. I was CEO for 15 years. And so I, you know, I, I manage the, the company's public facing um, processes and, and um, you know, how we were portraying ourselves. And I think that we have to be less cautious, as Bob, I think, was just alluding to about such things and not be concerned, like just commenting about what happened in Washington last week. That's not political on our part at all. We, we know that what we saw was fundamentally wrong and that it was rooted in hatred and disrespect and contempt and intolerance. And we should feel free as a company to comment about that without retribution. This was, of course, in reference to January 6, where Republicans, centrists, and other American citizens stormed the Capitol in protest for what they saw as an obviously rigged election. He then goes on to suck his own dick for making movies like Coco, Black Panther, and other race-focused propaganda, specifically mentioning diversity and inclusion, which of course is Hollywood newspeak for tokenism and racism. But what I see as the main problem with what he said is that he doesn't believe he should receive any, quote, retribution for calling half the country fundamentally wrong rooted in hatred and disrespect and contempt and intolerance. Good job alienating half the country there, Bob. But on top of that just being a blatant lie, what makes an executive in California think that anybody outside of the US gives a crap about their opinions on American politics? It has absolutely no effect on us in the rest of the world. We do not care. While the company did see a slight uptick in platform usage to the tune of 7 million new subscribers in the last quarter of 2023, this same quarter also saw them burn $387 million in its operating costs. Well that's just bad business. Spending so much money for such little return is never going to end well in the long run. Even a mega corporation like Disney doesn't have infinite money, as much as some shills may try to make you believe. On top of all of this, there's been a lot of news over the past year regarding Disney's biggest investors, notably Nelson Peltz, demanding a spot on the board because they have, quote, underperformed on every level. First of all, this board, from Bob to every in independent director, has underperformed the S&P on every measure. He has stated that if he or any of his nominations get onto the board, there will be massive restructuring of the company's goals, going back to a profit-first company, focusing on entertainment and dropping the political messaging. There's also been many reports of VFX companies refusing to work with Disney Marvel because of the stress brought on by the unrealistic deadlines and accusations of bullying from the mega corporation which, if we're being honest, can be seen in the final products. Most, if not all, MCU movies from the last few years have had terrible special effects, more often than not looking unfinished, which makes sense because apparently they were. Lastly, we have been seeing many actors refusing to work with Disney due to the direction they were going. Most recently, we had John Bernthal, the Punisher, refusing to work with them for that exact reason. It wasn't until this last couple of months where he finally accepted their offer to return in Daredevil Born Again, after the complete restructuring of that show's script got to a place he was personally happy with. All of this combined certainly paints a bleak picture for Disney as a whole, but I will no doubt still have shills in my comments calling me names and complaining that I dare speak the truth about their precious corporate overlords. Disney needs to piss off with their political stance and go back to pure entertainment, or Disney Plus will be facing an even rougher time in the next few years. And if they don't realise that soon, they may even face bankruptcy in the near future. They already make most of their money from their theme parks, but even they are beginning to struggle with the rising competition of Universal and soon Nintendo Land. So eat shit, woke tards, 2024 is the year that woke dies, and this is all evidence of that. But that's all I have for you today. 
My name's Dean James, your mate in comics from the land down under. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Let's go!